Hello, when it comes to video editing on the Chromebook, we are, or perhaps should I say were, quite limited. So most of my videos, or nearly all of my videos, I've made on my YouTube channel. I obviously had to record my Chromebook screen for my how-to videos, but all of the video editing I've then done on a Windows computer. But I've really wanted to try and get away from this. So I'm gonna show you in this video that online editors now have come a long way and I'm even gonna show you that you can actually use green screen. And the green screen you can see on the back here, green screen would use that to remove that so you can then see whatever background I would want you to see. Or if I'm doing a how-to video and I didn't want the background to show, it would show the green screen would then allow me to show you the actual desktop background instead. So I'm gonna show you how you can actually do that now on a Chromebook just by using an online editor. And it shows how far they've come. Don't get me wrong, can I get it as good as I can if I do it on a Windows computer? Not really, but that's perhaps more down to me having to learn more about the software because video editing software does take some time to learn and you need to learn the tricks, but it is possible. And I'm gonna show you all that in the video coming up. Okay, so here we are. So essentially, at the moment, I'm recording using the um, built-in Chrome OS video recording software, as because as you can see, it uses that default circle, which is fine. I, I quite like that rather than a square, but it's the default one, you can do that and that. And the reason why I'm doing this is I need to then record what I'm doing in ClickChamp, so that's why it's there. Now, this green here, the green screen is what we're referring to, but it won't do it on this part of the video, but I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so if you open up ClipChamp, and then we've got ClipChamp, and then we're gonna do a brand new recording. So I'm just gonna click up here. So I'm gonna just choose screen and camera here, but if you don't use screen and camera, you can do create a video like that first, and then choose from here, go to record and create, and do screen and camera. So choose that, and then as you can see, it's showing my camera there. And then turn this off here. This coach, I'm not, I've not looked into that yet, so I won't look at that. It's defaulted to my mic, which is this one here. So if you've got a mic, you might want to choose. So there's the webcam mic. I wouldn't want to use that. It's best to use your own default mic, or you can use the internal mic, the mic on your actual Chromebook. So the default is mic, which is how I'm going to leave it. And then here, it's again, you can either choose your Chromebook camera, which is like that, as you can see there, which is not what we want to do. I want to use my external camera, which is that one. So you can choose the camera you want to use. And then just hit record like this. And here you can share system audio if you want to. So I'll just click yes on there. You've got the option of window, Chrome tab, but we're gonna do the entire screen. Click on that, and then you get the share option. And straight away, anyone who's done video editing before will think, oh, this looks very similar to OBS. And it does look very similar to OBS. So this part is actually recording. So you'd need to cut all this part out, which we'll do, and I'll show you how it works. So if I minimize this now, and run the Chrome desktop. Now, ignore the fact that this is here, because this isn't a ClipChamp recording. This is me recording what I'm doing on ClipChamp so you can see it. So we're not gonna be changing anything on this one here, but whilst this re is recording, so this wouldn't be here if you was using ClipChamp. This is the Chrome OS editor. Whilst we're recording now, we're using ClipChamp, and that's what this is here, you can just minimize that and go about your recording. Now, as you can see, you can't see my camera anywhere apart from that one there, which is not linked. You can't see it, but it is recording the camera. Now, it's gonna be recording the camera, and then what I could do, I could then just do a video, for example. So I could say, look, here's the new start menu, or perhaps I want to be, I would want to be showing you the new calendar, but the calendar's been there a while. So just to explain, this is what I'd roughly do. And then that's all I'm gonna do on this video. The one thing I do like about the Chrome OS video editor, this is the built-in one, you did see that jumped up there when I did that. 
However, don't worry, you can also do that with the clip champ one we're using. It's just a more of a manual process, which is fine. Okay, so then what we will do is go back to clip champ and do stop and then do save and edit like that. And it's done that. And then what we need to do, here it is there, and they're here, let me just close the notifications. So the first thing what I love about ClipChamp is, as you can see, it's, this is the desktop recording that we've just done, this one here. And this is the webcam recording. What I love is the fact it records two separate videos, so it doesn't record them together, which most do. For example, the Chrome OS video editor I'm using here, that's all just one actual line here i can't think of the right expression for it but clip but here it's done two clips which is important because what that means is when you're if we go like this you can see this is the beginning of the video that we just recorded if we go forward a little bit so until we get to the desktop there you'll see we've got a desktop and there's the actual camera they're recording see this wouldn't be here if you're using, using clip champ you would just have this one and as you can see there's the, the green screen is there but we need to deal with getting that green screen to work which i'll show you but the reason why it's great that there's two of these what you'd first want to do is you'd want to click on this top one here right click and ungroup so that ungroups them and then what the reason one of the reasons why it's good Say, for example, if we get to the video, see there, where I was showing you the menu, if we went back a little bit like that, just to where we get the menu come up, there, so go to there, you can click on that, and because it's not part of this video anymore, you've ungrouped it, you can manually move that. So we could manually move that there, for that part of the video and then carry on like that and then it will stay up there like that and then you can see there it's got in the way so if you wanted to then move that to say there what you would have to do is here right click on here split so you're splitting them to there and then on this one here, click on it and drag that. You could just drag it there if you wanted to, or you could drag it there, you can drag it anywhere. And that's fine. So that's then moved the webcam, as you can see. So if I just press play, you won't be able to hear the recording because I'm recording on here, but I will show you the recording with sound in a bit. you can see it jumps over out of the way. I know it's a bit confusing because there's two, but it's the only way I could really show you um, at the same time. So what I was doing, the main thing here, is showing you the green screen. And the other good thing about it using two separate cameras is you can expand that camera if you want to, or decrease it whenever you want, which is great, which you wouldn't be able to do with this one because that's all recorded on just one timeline. Okay, so I'm going to increase that there, like that. And then what we need to do, we need to do the green screen. So I'll just move that over there for a second. So click on that one there. Click on... Now we have separated these two here, so bear that in mind. So that means whatever we do on this one won't happen on this one. So a little tip, the best thing to do is to do the green screen before you do any cuts of the actual webcam. But on this one, we'll leave it as it is, so that's fine. Okay, so what you would do then is go to filters, and you can see there's lots of filters. If you scroll down, and there should be a green screen, it's this one here, green screen, click on that. Now, don't get me wrong, green screen on ClipChamp, it works really well, but it de if you wanted to use green screen to make it excellent you would have to use 
a, 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 a true video editor. But if I'm being honest with you, the, the results are pretty good. So you don't expect to have all the options you would have with true green screen, they're just not there. But it works really well. So as you can see, it's put it to green. If it wasn't a green, so we're refer, referring to this color here now there, if it wasn't green, you've also got the options of red. I've never heard of a red screen before. You do have blue. Blue's been used before. It used to be used by the BBC many years ago. But generally speaking, most companies and video uh, editor, any video editing done is using green screen now. So click on green screen. And as you can see, it's already done it pretty well. It's not too bad. If we expand this a bit, just so you can see, and expand that, we can put it back down again afterwards. You can see it's a little grainy, and what I mean by that, you can see that looks nice, and then it does change there. So you would use the threshold here to get it how good you want it to be. So really grainy, not to what we want. We want it so you can't see the difference between that background there and that background there. So if you do use the threshold, and there you go. You can see, I, I think that's pretty much spot on. Now, one thing I did realize is I was like, ah, because I have my green screen, I used to have my green screen on the wall, so I wouldn't have the gaps, but as you can see, I'm using just a mobile green screen. So there's a gap on either side of the recording, and that's that here. Now you don't have masking, I don't believe, I've not see, come across it yet, on Clipchamp and you'd use masking to deal with this. However, you can fix it. So if here, you just simply crop. So crop there and you just crop it to the green screen edge like that. And then crop this side as well, like that. And then to click tick. And that's it, it's done. Now, it, that's pretty good results. And obviously you can still move this around uh, if you want to now, and you can shrink it back down if you want to now. That's absolutely fine. So this timeline here, well, this is just one timeline, but this section here, we've done the green screen. If we went back, it wouldn't be on that one. As you can see, that's not done it. But like I said, if you did green screen, the best thing to do is always do it before you start doing any split splitting on the timeline because then you're just going to repeat the process so now what you'll see is that we've got green screen and i will play the video just to show you and i'll increase that like that just to show you that it works really well um i'll, I'll Oh, the audio won't come on, unfortunately, because I'm using the mic, so you won't hear any of the audio, but you will see the green screen. Okay. And there you can see the green screen. And as you can see, that's really good. It's You can tell a little bit around the edges. There's, there's a slight, but nothing really bad. And for, for an online video, it's a... I'm really impressed with that, so that's really good. So that's another reason why now with Chrome OS, with these online video editors, you can start getting really good videos, which is great, because I do truly want to get to a stage where I'm using Chrome OS to do everything, and that's the case now. I, I Gaming I do on Chrome OS using NVIDIA GeForce now, and now I can do my video editing. Do not get me wrong, it's never going to be as good as a professional video editor because they've got years and years of experience and they cost money to buy, so there's, there's so much more in-depth stuff you can do with a professional video editor. And I'm not saying that I wouldn't have to use a bit professional video editor on some videos. It just depends on what you're doing. But on most of them, I could just use this. Now, there's, there are a few things which I don't think is great. Hopefully, it will be fixed in the future. Or maybe there is an option, but I haven't just come across it yet. But I, for example, would like that to be right on the bottom there, just so it's right there. So it's on before, after the tray, the desktop tray, and above there. And it doesn't it just clicks from that position there so slightly above or slightly below it's it doesn't it clips into place it doesn't let you do it perfect maybe some people might think i'm being a bit, a bit of 
perfectionist there, which may be so, but it, I would have liked to have seen that. You can still get it to the bottom of the screen, but then you haven't got the desktop tray there, which I like to see myself personally. However, there's no denying that this is quite a good green screen. It, it's pretty good. And then obviously, if you're playing the video, it green screens in the background. So it's the reason why you'd use green screen, because if you didn't want this scenario and you wanted to just see yourself rather than that, and personally speaking, although this is fine, having that, or you wouldn't necessarily have a green background, you might have your, your beige background or whatever the background is on, on when you're taking the photo, video. Um, I, I do like it like this. I just think it looks a little bit more professional and it's not as off-putting. So I'm really impressed with the quality of it if I'm being honest, you're really impressed. So ClipChamp has definitely improved. When I tried this a couple of months ago, um, the green screen was not very good what I got back from it. So I thought that isn't something I'd want to use. But now I can seriously say that I will, and it is gonna be trial for me, so I'm gonna to have to learn ClipChamp. It's, it's, it's quite an easy video to, to, to learn. There's not many options, but it's still something you've got to learn. So I'm sure I'll get better over time. But if you're looking to do video editing on Chrome OS and you want to do it with an online editor, I would recommend giving ClipChamp a go. You can get a free version. This isn't the free version because the free version wouldn't allow me to do a video export on 1080p, for example. And I, I don't do 4K exports to YouTube, although 4K is great. I think 1080p is fine. And you've got to consider people on their mobile phones. I don't want them having a jagged experience because they haven't all the bandwidth what's being used, although it can downgrade it. But I do all my videos in 1080p. And with ClipChamp, you can do that. And I think it's $9.99 a month I'm paying. So yes, I am having to pay $9.99 a month, where if I was using my professional video editor, I wouldn't have to pay anything because I've bought the software. But I've no longer got this issue where I will need to record on my Chromebook and then I'll put it onto my desktop computer and then do it within that software. Although I love that software and it's great and there's lots of different software. You can get DaVinci Resolve, which is really good. HitFilm's really good. They're all great video editors for Windows. I've never used Mac at Win uh, video editors. You can get some great ones on there as well. But it's really good to see that you can just get a video editor on ClipChamp. So yeah, the, the reason for this video today was really to show you that you can actually do green screen on ClipChamp. So it isn't just a very basic video editor. And I think you would agree that the results are pretty good. So they're quite good. So I'm quite impressed with it. So I hope you liked this video today. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for future videos. And thanks for watching.